personality as you know the personality is a character the inherent character of any person right uh, that means that how the person behaves in various situations the context right so therefore the personality is highly contextual right you cannot say the personality is inherently good or bad so let's see the overview of different personality types and how to know yourself what kind of personality that you have it right so it's just an overview and in-depth coverage is there in my new book called life skills please check out in the amazon it's now available the print version as well as the ebook version okay so uh, uh so in the in the before telling about or dwelling about the personality types mind that the personality is partly under the control of your genes and partly under the control of the environment the way that you were brought up that means nature and nurture i hope these terms are clear to you nature means mostly genetic right while nurture means the way you were brought up especially your environment around you your social circle so both play roles in determining your personality type right and uh, of course can you change your personality from one type to another yeah it is possible but it's not recommended because it will lead to several internal struggles and crisis on your own core identity you know and uh, therefore it's not recommended that you attempt to change your personality from one to another but then what is the point of the entire personality dialogue about it it's important to know your own personality type uh, for what you might ask to take safeguards about your decisions that you make you know and also that will aid you for your own self discovery so it is something like metacognition you know uh, you are just looking at your own personality at uh, far uh, at a far distance you know so then you are just describing how you are a, as a person right so the self discovery aspect of the personality is much more important right and uh, of course the personality types whatever the types that you have and if you have a sibling let us say that you have a uh, you know a, a, a homozygotic twin sibling uh, that means that very much similar and genetically identical you know identical twins still have personality different so none of us have got exactly same personality so every every one of us have unique set of the personality so the five personality traits the main five what are these the big five it's called big five personality traits the first one is called extroversion extroversion means how you know how gregarious you are how open you are for social experiences for example are you a party lover you know so are you an extrovert or are you an introvert so introverts are kind of shy and they don't like to go for parties or social gatherings while extroverts are just the opposite so extroversion if you score high in extroversion means you are highly extrovert while low in extroversion means you are likely to be an introvert so earlier early on people used to say that extroversion is very good while introverts are kind of like negative you know sociopath but that is not the case introversion is now correlated with creativity too you know so none of this you can label it as good or bad right so everything has got its own uh, benefit and uh, yes yeah, so the negative aspects as well right so extroversion yeah so introversion there is a very interesting book which i read recently it's called quiet uh, by susan uh, susan kane right uh, it's all about the introverts and uh, why introversion is an amazing trait so if you yourself is an introvert like me check it out that book by susan kane's it's called quiet available in the amazon so the next the first one in the big five is extroversion second one is called openness openness means how open you are for the new experiences and how risk taking you are uh, you know ca yeah ca are you ready for taking calculated risk in your life right so that is called the uh, openness so openness to new experiences right so uh, if you are low in this openness then you tend to be reserved and uh, safety oriented and stick with something called status quo the effect status quo you don't want to change from what is going on with your life you know so that is what this openness is all about right the third one is called agreeableness agreeableness means how, how likely you are to agree even if presented 
uh, not with substantiating proofs right so uh, those who score very high in agreeableness tend to be gullible while those who score less in agreeableness tend to be you know applying the principles of uh, critical thinking like they are aware of the logical fallacies and cognitive biases and all right so they are not very easy to agree on a statement they will ask for more proof right so those who score high in agreeableness beware that you might be uh, whatever that you believe is true might not be true you are more prone for fake news and uh, you know all those uh, you know disinformation and misinformation right so that is why i told you that knowing your own personality type is a part of the self discovery process then comes conscientiousness so what is this conscientiousness so it's all about how disciplined you are how organized you are you have very high self discipline you score very high in conscientiousness right on the other hand if you are really chaotic then you know careless and squandering your time and money both are important right uh, and yeah so money you can squander you can simply go for impulse purchases uh, if you are like that then you are pretty low in conscientiousness score right so those who very are very high they tend to lead a disciplined lifestyle finally the fifth uh, attribute of this big five personality traits are neuroticism so it's all about the emotions so how emotionally fluctuating person you are if you frequently have ups and downs uh, you keep on getting sad and keep on getting extremely euphoric happy and sad you know then you are very high in neuroticism on the other hand if you are low in neuroticism you are kind of placid tranquil life you know so like stoic right if you practice stoic philosophy you tend to be low in neuroticism while if you have the, this dramatic life and you you put a lot of drama into your own life and you tend to uh, you know tend to go ups and downs emotional roller coaster rides then you tend to be a neurotist right and uh, yeah so uh, a person who is high in conscientiousness extroversion and agreeableness tend to be friendly so there are several papers so this paper is by wilson's 2015 and also it's correlated with uh, you know the students performance in various subjects so we have several such papers borg in 1996 and felder in 2002 check out my book i've done an in-depth analysis of all these evidences right but as it i kept on telling you labeling these traits as good or bad for example early on uh, psychologists made this very bad uh, you know a practice of labeling extroverts as good introvert as bad but that is completely a, a myth you know so it it should not be the case right and there is no right or wrong personality types it's only situational compatibility that matters right now how do you test yourself you know so all these five each one you can have different different score so the best one which i like is something called 538.com project.538.com just check it out uh, links are available in the show notes of this video as well as on my book and uh, open psychometrics.com is another good site i like this 538.com uh, the reason is that it produces something called spider graph you know like a spider uh, the five points and each point that there will be a dot so you can just cross compare uh, between for example your partner uh, or your friends Ooh. to see that how, uh, how you know how uh, comparable both of your personality is there is another kind of personal test called mbti what is that uh, it's called you know it's called uh, mayers briggs type indicator so mayers and briggs were psych psychologist rather they are like citizen scientists you know they are they love psychology but they didn't have any formal degrees it's a fantastic story about the mayers and briggs their mother daughter duo they didn't have any formal training in psychology but they love carl jung the famous german uh, you know uh, psychologist and they read all of his books and they were alive during the jung's lifetime and they even met jung you know so they made this very interesting test to categorically classify you into 16 types so basically there are four dichotomy 
So, uh, and each of these four will have 16 types. Four multiplied by four is 16, right? So that permutation is what is being calculated this in this MBTI test, right? Unfortunately, MBTI is highly unreliable. And, you know, so stick with that big five, which I told you earlier. But for the sake of uh, this, you know, this uh, personality type. So, of course, MBTI also need some attention. So, first of this MBTI is called extroversion or introversion. Are you an extrovert or introvert? So, as you know, this is this suffers from false dichotomy. It's like classifying all human beings as either tall or short. While most of us fall somewhere in the middle. So, there is no way to measure it. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? So, it's only two options here, right? And the second, I told you there are four in this MBTI. The first one is extrovert or introvert. Second one is that are you, you know, sensing or are you intuition? So do you have an intuition, intuitive ability or do you sense what is going on in, in the world? The third one is that are you thinking or are you feeling type? Thinking means you really uh, use your cognitive skills for deliberate and rational thinking. While feeling means mostly controlled by the emotions, you know. And the fourth one is judging or perception. So you you tend to believe in the perception or do you really judge the persons uh, and uh, the situations, you know. So, but judging doesn't mean you are judgmental, you know. You don't have any sweeping generalization. That is not what it is. the judging here is. And uh, if you are curious to know my own type, I did that many times and consistently my type is coming to be INTJ, right? So I means the introvert, N stands for intuitive rather than sensing, T for thinking rather than feeling, while J for judging rather than perceiving. You know, uh, very interestingly, you know, your entire lifetime, the personality can change, right? If you did the same test a decade back and today if you're doing, you will get a different thing as well, right? So it's okay. It's absolutely fine because you keep on changing, right? Your personality also a little bit of change here and there. But if you're getting an entirely different personality after 10 years, be careful. Maybe the, the way the test work might not be reliable, you know? So usually the personality remain more or less same. So uh, you can actually... Uh, do that my suggestion is to, to try and to test with various tests available and these uh, especially this uh, you know uh, mayors Briggs type indicator suffers from something called Barnum effect Barnum effect is one of the psychological effect that is being leveraged by astrologers you know to predict your uh, future life so they make uh, the statements which is a kind of abstract and it's always positive like uh, you're going to have a uh, you know you're going to have a, a, a beautiful life ahead uh, which is absolutely fine right so it's kind of deliberately ambiguous and generally positive description you know so uh, for example uh, you know for example what uh, yes so good days ahead or uh, you know, you tend to be very careful. Yes, everybody is tend to be very careful, right? Like that. It's called Barnum effect. So that is the reason of this MBTA. Any kind of personality, if you look, it's all positive. So whatever be your personality, you're perfectly fine, right? Uh, yes, so the false dichotomy, I already told you that uh, there is another main problem with this uh, test, right? And uh, of course, uh, there are several other uh, test available apart from these two main thing the first one is the the big five while the other one is mbti so the the big five tend to be much more rigorous unfortunately there is no way to cross compare like the you know the uh, the spider graph of one person with spider graph of another person how can you really compare for is the differences statistically significant or not it's not that easy but with Mayer's Briggs, it's super easy. Mine is INTJ. If my partner is also INTJ, I can say, well, we both have same personality. But, uh, you know, it is, it's super easy. At the same time, it's highly deceptive. You know, it might not be true as well. Okay. So some other tests have completely took a different approach 
uh, you know, uh, I mean, complete departure from either of these two approaches. For example, there's a very interesting paper by Martinson in 2011. And the paper looked what, uh, you know, aspect of the psychology is correlated with creativity, you know. So what they come out is that motivation plays a big role, uh, you know. And the second one is ambition, uh, how ambitious you are. So how ambitious means that you're less attention grabbing and you don't care about validation, social validation at all, right? And uh, yes, yeah, so you tend to be ambitious but patient. So that ambition is also correlated with creativity. Then flexibility, are you ready to relearn what you already think you know? So that flexibility, especially the mental flexibility is correlated with creativity. You know, because you, you need to keep on improving your former self. Then only you can make substantial progress with your life, right? Even with your creative endeavors. And then neuroticism is another uh, very interesting thing. So they tend to be emotionally high and low, you know. So you might think neuroticism is a very bad asset. No, it is not. It is correlated with creativity, right? So another one is that maverick. So, are you maverick? Maverick is usually, uh, you know, against the conservative uh, or traditional kind of uh, socially accepted norms. You know, you tend to live a lifestyle which is very different from the rest of the people around you. The maverick lifestyle. And uh, that you tend to have rebellion and even liberal thinking if you have it, you know. And finally, the seventh trait associated with creativity is imagination. So you tend to be imaginative and innovative uh, without being brash, you know. So people who are imaginative tend to be a lot more creativity. They tend to daydream often and they're very playful. They, are, they experiment with the different choices while they deeply focus while working. So this is an overview of various personality types and uh, don't be judgmental about the person. There is nothing good or wrong. It all depends upon the situation, right? Thank you for watching.